surface label, and table styles. As we've seen in the lesson on points, most civil 3D entities have two types of styles, the object styles and the label style. The first controls the look of the object itself, while the latter controls the annotation that goes with the entity. For example, a surface will need spot elevation, contours elevation, and slope values, while an alignment would need stations and offsets and manholes would need rim and pipe invert elevations. These are all called labels, and the way they are displayed constitute the label style. Let's create a couple of labels for the surface, slopes and spot elevation styles. To make it easier to create labels, use the Global Label Creation dialog box. On the ribbon, click on the Annotate tab. Then, to the far left, click on Add Labels. When you hover over, there are two sections, the top and bottom part. You need to be careful on which you click, as they will lead you two different paths. You may still be able to find your way and add labels, but the process will be different. We want to click on the top part. That brings up the Add Label dialog box. This is a global window for labels, as it is common to most objects. Options available in the dialog box change depending on the selected feature. If we choose to label a surface, the type of labels we will be able to create will be different than those for, say, alignment or profiles. Change the feature to Surface. For label type, choose Spot Elevation. We already have a few label styles that come with our default template, like EL100.00, which displays elevations in that format. Now, suppose that we want to create an elevation style that will display information on two surfaces, a tie-in location like the back of lots. At these locations, we want to display the proposed elevation and the existing ground elevation. We don't currently have a style that can do that, so we will have to create one. On the Information tab, enter the name of the label, say, Spot Elevation EG and PR, and the description, Existing and Proposed Elevation, for example. On the General tab, we can specify things like label visibility, label orientation, layer, and the like. The Layout tab is where most of the label creation action takes place. This is where we create the label components and control the visibility. The components already created are displayed in the Component Name box. We can create new components such as text, lines, blocks, etc. by clicking on the A plus symbol to the right. Let's also change Surface Elevation Component Name to FG-Elev to make it clear that this component is for FG or finished ground. In this window, we can also change elements of the label like text styles and height, rotations, colors, line weight, border, and more. For our second surface elevation, we need to add a second text, besides the default surface elevation text component that we just edited. The type of text we will need this time is not the first type that says text, but the last one, reference text. The difference is that using text will give us information on the current surface we are attaching the label to, the proposed design surface, while the reference text will reference another surface, the existing ground surface. So, click on the reference text. Our surface label will be able to grab information from different types of entities, such as alignments, profiles, parcels, and the like. This capability has several great applications in creating all types of labels. In the Select Type window, choose Surface. That's because, besides our proposed surface, we also want the label a reference elevation from the existing ground. Click OK. A new text component is created with the name Reference Text.1. Next, change the name of the newly created component from Reference Text.1 to EG Elev to make its function more explicit. Giving obvious names is crucial. It facilitates managing styles and providing better template readability for future users of the file. When you open the component name box, you should have two components. If you have more than two, you can always click on the red cross to the right to delete unwanted ones. One important thing we need to understand is how to stack the different components we are creating. For good readability, we have different options to anchor the components in relations to each other. First is the anchor component which means the object to which we want to tie the label. 
We can choose Feature to specify that we want to tie the component to the feature, meaning the point where we are creating the label. Once we specify the anchor component, we also need to determine the anchor point. It means in relation to the anchor component, where do we want the label to be, left, right, or middle? For this label, let's decide to anchor fg elev to the top right of the feature, mean the point where we are putting the label. Then we will anchor eg elev to the bottom of fg elev. To do that, we can anchor the component fg elev to feature. Next, we need to position the eg elev component. We can also anchor it to feature, but we don't want it to overlap fg elev, so instead, we are going to anchor it to fg elev. To summarize so far, the proposed label component fg is anchored to feature, or the insertion point of the label, while the existing label component, e.g., is anchored to the proposed label. Don't forget that you have a preview window that allows you to see how your labels stack while you are still creating them. Notice the question marks in the preview. That is because the e.g. l of reference and external surface, which we have not specified yet. Now that we have positioned the label the way we want, Let's work on the content, the actual information we want to convey with these labels. Start with eg l of component. The proposed label is probably already set. To change the content, on the contents line, when you click on the label text cell, you will notice an icon with three small dots. Click on it. We are familiar with this window. We have used it before in the template and styles lesson. Now, First, select Label Text in the Editor, then the Properties drop-down box. Select Surface and click on the horizontal arrow to apply that label. Once we do that, the Reference Surface Elevation code will be applied. We also have an option to format the label display, such as the label units, meter or feet, precision, decimal places, and others. One more thing. We will have two labels stacked on top of each other so we need to be able to differentiate them. Let's add a text in front of each, so we know what surface elevation they represent. In front of the elevation code, enter the surface name or initials, like EG. Click OK to return to the Label Composer window. Now select the fg elev component and do the same thing. First, go to the Content line, click the Content Editor icon, then add the prefix FG before the elevation code. Click on OK twice to close the text component editor and the label composer window to return to the add label window. If it's closed, you can reopen it from the annotate tab. Make sure our new style spot elevation dash FG and EG is active and select basic X style. Click on add. At the command line, you are prompted to select a surface to annotate. You are presented with two options. You can either click on the surface in the drawing, if you can identify it, or you can press Enter at the command line. Press Enter at the command line. Ideally, at this step, we would pick the FG finished ground surface. Since we are not that far in the design, we don't have one yet. So, for the time being, let's select the prelim-eg surface just to simulate what would happen once we get our FG surface. You are now prompted for the location of the label. Let's choose the back of the lot for one of the parcels in the Lavender Court cul-de-sac, to the west of the utility easement. Now that we have placed the FG label, we are prompted to select the surface that we are trying to reference for EG label. Press Enter at the command line to select Existing Ground for Reference Surface and click OK. We are then prompted to select another point to label. Let's just click on one more point and end the command. We now have exactly what we wanted, a label style that displays both EG and FG elevations. You can press Escape at the command line to end this command. We will see later how to add other types of labels like slopes and contours after we are done designing the finished ground. Recap. To recap, in this lesson we have learned how to use different entities to define a surface, 
How to edit a surface definition. How to perform different sorts of analysis on a surface, including elevations, slopes, etc. And how to label a surface with spot or contour elevations. In the next lesson, we will learn how to subdivide a residential site into individual lots. Thanks for watching Infratech Civil to the Point Training.